Oh la la! Hey, it's me, Cisco Morrison. Here's what's coming up by Gardening with Cisco. Learn how to get rid of molds. The best way to harvest onions. Make 28 minute chili and a surefire way to safely identify mushrooms. All this and more coming up right now on Gardening with Cisco. Cisco Morris. And I'm Megan Black. Welcome to Gardening with Cisco. You know, we're enjoying a gorgeous fall day, beautiful color here at Magnuson Park in Seattle, and Cisco brought along his golf club. <laughs> That's because it's mushroom season, of, of course. Of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but first we have to talk about moles. Okay. Nothing drives people crazier, and it's illegal to trap them anymore. Uh huh. But there are some nice, humane herbal methods you can try. <laughs> Ruby, what's this? What is that? What's in here? Hey, you're supposed yeah. to be a hunter. <laughs> it doesn't is... look like the dogs are helping to get rid of the moles. Hey, there you go. What do oh. I buy all those milk bones for anyway, you know? Just <laughs> not interested. Hey, nah. ne this must be the time of year. Mole holes are popping up. My yard, Cisco's yard, and by the judgment of all the emails we're getting, everybody <laughs> yeah. else has a problem too right now. Everybody has a mole problem. So how do you get rid of these guys? Well, you know, uh, the only way WSU, the scientists, say you could do it is to get a mole trap that kills them. And that's illegal. It's illegal. So we've got to try folklores. We have no choice, you and know. And you say you have a remedy that a lot of people say works. A lot of people send me emails, meet me, and say, I tried your bowl blaster recipe and it worked. Okay. Mint. Yeah, that's the secret ingredient, mint. huh? Hey, we need I two handfuls for this recipe. Oh, I love the way it smells. So here, I'll chop a bunch off. Yeah, and it, this is, even though not too many people would plant mint in their container right by the house, but it really smelled great. It does. But the key thing is now I get to use it to go after my bowls, you know. Okay, Megan, it's a cooking lesson. Oh. Chef Cisco, you know. <laughs> so it looks like we're going to blend up some, some yeah. of the mint. Yep. So we want to kind of break it up. Okay. And uh, just, you know, cram it all in there, little pieces as you can get. Oh, really? Yeah. And I suppose the stems you say are okay. Yeah, the stems, if they're not too woody, if they're real woody, that's not so good. Yeah. And, and I'm sure the moles don't care as long as it's pungent enough. That's huh? right. So and do the moles not like the mint? Is they that hate what it mint. Is? They hate mint. Yeah, some people tell me all you got to do is take mint stems and crush them with a plier, stick them down every mole hole. Add a little water so we can make a slurry. All okay. right. Stick the lid on there. All right, you ready? Sure. What should we try? Puree to start? Puree, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> there, I think that's okay. it. Okay, now we need to fill this soup pan pretty much full of water okay. there. Okay, let's fire this baby up. Okay, Here's just stick it right on high. Now we'll stick this uh, slurry. There we go. Ooh. Ooh. So you cook up a good concoction of water and mint? Yeah, and that's, that's right. It? That's it. That's all you need. Now, uh, now this says that we get it to a boil, okay. which is going to take a while, and then it's got to simmer for 30 minutes. It, it can be diluted to make six gallons. So I guess we can put it on with yeah, this. Yeah, so here we got two cups of this stuff here. Whoops. Here we go. Okay. Two cups into a watering can. Yep, now we just need four cups of water about in there, you know. And we're, we're ready, ready to go we're attack ready to, moles to with get mint. those moles out of my garden. Okay, you moles, you've had it now, buddies. So, so what we try to do is just pour some right in there. And, you know, you want to be fairly generous with it. And it's illegal to trap and kill moles yourself, but you can hire someone professionally. You can hire a professional. They have special permits to do it. Okay. So yep. other than that, you deal with the... Uh, and I am telling you, they can really do damage to your garden, oh, can't they? They can wreck your garden. You know, they make the lawn look terrible. If they go under a little plant, then it can undermine the roots, be air. They don't eat the roots, but they undermine them, and then it can right. kill the plant. So I'm hoping they'll pack up their pigs, move over to my neighbor's yard. <laughs> 
Mint and water. That's the way to get rid of moles. We hope. <laughs> Okay, Megan, you know, moles aren't all bad. Really? Yeah, even though they eat a lot of worms and they make all those bumps, they do aerate the soil and they do eat some bad insects, too. Well, then maybe you need to get an extra one. I don't so, want any more. One thing I've noticed, and I don't know if it's true or not, but when we have a watering system on, we don't get any moles, like all summer long the neighbors do. But then we turn it off and all of a sudden I have a mole hole. So the vibration, you think, is it? I'm thinking. Maybe well, it's I'll making noise. <laughs> Welcome back to Gardening with Cisco from Magnus Park here in Seattle. What's going on? I'm looking for mushrooms to tee off on. I can't find any. Okay, so I know I want you to let me know before you do, and I'll step out of the picture. I okay? promise I'll yell for it. Just yell. I don't care what you yell. I, I like my teeth, okay? <laughs> so um, this summer, w fall, what was the best vegetable you had? Broccoli. Really? By far. I'm I still getting it. Sprouts. I'm getting it out of my garden right now. Wow. Still, do you believe it? But that reminds me, I harvested a heck of a lot of onions uh -huh. this year. There's some special things you need to do so that you can be eating them all winter long. So I don't know what's up with this guy. Now he's stomping onions. <laughs> what? Megan, you gotta, you gotta, once most of them fall down, right? then you just go out and you stomp the rest down. Oh, well, you're not stomping Well, um. kind of stomping. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mini I've got stop. some great property to sell you in Florida, dude. Okay, so you basically want to break over the yeah, tits and that the... stops them growing. Now okay. we're curing them. Okay. So for one week they sit like this. Uh huh. Then after a week, then you go out, and it's time to harvest. So, whoop, there so you it do is. just pull them out. Yeah. How about that? Yeah, and, and once they fall over, because uh -huh. half fall over, that's when you stomp them down. Once that happens. Then you stop watering. Okay. Yeah, so stop watering. So what happens when you're curing? Then why do you need to cure onions? Well, that gets their skin harder, so they store. So they have to sit there dry. Uh, but okay. it's not enough even to leave them in the ground. Now we got to cure them out here. So let's lay them down. Oops, hey, Megan, but first we should get all the dirt off. Oh, okay. You know, we can do that later too, but it helps to get a little off. And that way they'll dry out yep. maybe a little faster. And they love to cure in the sunshine. Okay. So you want to lay it where sun's going to hit it, but but the dew will destroy it because if they get wet at all, that wrecks it. So I have my secret thing here that we I have to use. I had no idea onions were so needy. Here it is, the secret trick. So we don't want that to get wet. Right. So this is an old Gore-Tex jacket I never wear anymore. Uh -huh. <laughs> so uh, at night, we just put it to bed. Cover them up. So I'll have a bunch out here. Dew doesn't get on it. Dew it doesn't can get dry on. out. Yeah. Harden its skin, yep. and that way you can store it for yeah. longer. Yep. And then the, in the morning, you got to remember to take it off. Now, if it rains, get it into the garage. This isn't good enough. Okay. Get it and just put them on the floor of the garage, and they got to cure for about a week. Now, after they've cured. We can either take a bunch of these and tie them together, you know, braid them. Oh, yeah. Like you do garlic, or you just cut them off, always leave an inch. And then, and of course, these roots will all dry up and we can cut them off right. if they're there. And then you just put them in, you know, an onion sack or leave them out in some open area. But, you know, and uh, check them all the time because uh, if they start to grow or they rot, you want to get them out of there right away. If they start to grow, eat them. But if they rot, you know, throw them away. Wow. Interesting. So, I had mm. no idea there were so many steps to harvesting an onion. Yeah, but if you do it right now, we'll have onions for so long, all summer, all winter long, I'll be eating onions. Oh, la, la. Love it. Okay, well, oh. go, go stomp. These are so good with Brussels sprouts. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, so once you have a whole bunch of those onions, you can chop them up and put them in the recipe I whipped up with Chef Lynn Villa. Which is? Coming up next. Welcome back to Garden with Cisco. Found some right here. Oh, la la! We found our mushrooms. All yes. All right. Time for you to tee up there, my friend. I will step back just a bit. I'm also stepping into the kitchen with Chef Lynn Villa. We are cooking up that 28 minute chili. I can go kicking and screaming into fall until 
You mm. serve up some of those fall comfort foods. <laughs> We're cooking chili. It's fun to get cozy, huh? It is. Yeah. Yes. So when we decided to do chili, I was like, oh my gosh, I have like 400 chili <laughs> recipes. <laughs> and so I decided just to go with something really cozy, really rich, but 28 minute chili. We're going to go simple. that because yep. you think it's an all day process. Mm -hmm. okay. Exactly. So we're going to start out pretty typically as most chilies go with a little, a little inert oil. This is sunflower oil and lots of... Of, Lots of onion. Uh, onion. Okay. You know, right now, the local sweet oh, onions. Yeah. And this so is the way. So do you care in chili if it's a, a sweet onion or I a do. yellow onion? Yeah, it has to be well, the sweet Well, you onion. know why? Because they have a higher sugar content and they get more caramelized. Oh, okay. And the kind of secret to my whole chili, because it is such a quick chili, right. is that caramelization. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yum. A little so, bit of garlic in there as yeah, well. Yeah, a little bit of garlic. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to get that turned up pretty high. Okay. We're not going to do the slow caramelization. We're going to do the quick, get some serious browning because on these things. Minutes. I know. Cool. Get that clock, clock going. Chicken. There you All go. right. So how's that looking right now? Okay, gorgeous. Okay. See how that nice brown is. So now we need to do yeah. tomato paste. Yeah. Let me hand oh, you thank this. You. Yep. And I'll get. So what I am doing now, Megan, is I've got this pan still going pretty hot. Right. These are chipotle peppers in adobo. Ooh. One of my secrets. Ooh. Yeah. Spicy and smoky, and sweet. Chili powder? Yeah, chili powder. And cinnamon. And cinnamon. And the spices need to go into a hot pan so they bloom. Okay. And the tomato paste, and this is why I use paste instead of uh, like puree right now, because mm -hmm. I want it to get some good caramelization. Oh, wow. This, yeah. is, this looks like the secret, Isn't it gorgeous? secret ingredient. Okay, so we'll give that just a second. So now that that's nice and golden yeah. brown, now we're going to add our super lean ground beef to that. Oh, perfect. Yeah. And you want to kind of, here, let me hold this for you. Okay. And then you'd want to just kind of, yeah, go for it. So the reason we're adding the beef now is because the pan is hot. It's going to add a little additional caramelization to this. And then we're going to cook that beef just until most of the pink disappears. She's working hard. I'm, I'm just, very I'm proud not of doing you. a very good job because it's here, still sticking. I'll turn sticking. it down a little bit. That's okay if it sticks because we're going to deglaze it in just a second. Oh, okay, good. So now that you've gotten most of the pink out of the right. beef, we're going to deglaze all that caramelization with some, some sort of liquid. Why so, not beer? Uh, why not beer? So about half of that bottle. Half of it. This is a local. This is the Full Sail LTD. And it's a lager, but it's a, like a really, it's a, their seasonal lager. And all the alcohol that evaporates out of it exactly. anyway. Exactly. Yeah, it so, completely yeah. dissipates yeah, yeah. very rapidly. Right. Okay, so once you've got that sort of level achieved. Oh my gosh, this looks good. It smell good. Now we're just going to add all the easy stuff. Okay, this looks pretty good, but where are we on our time, lady? About 14 minutes. Okay, we're halfway through. All the time in the world. Okay, All so right. now we want to So now we're going to add tomatoes. tomatoes. Yep. Okay, and these are just Muir Glen fire uh, roasted. You like those. I, I love them. What's yeah. not to love? No, absolutely. We've cooked with yep. those before, I remember. And then go ahead and add the beans. The beans. So the beans we have are two different two, kinds. Yep. Um, Azuki and black beans. No. Yeah. And now we're going to work on our seasoning a little bit. So a little maple syrup. Maple syrup? Not that whole thing. Just, just, oh, just drizzle it in a little bit and we'll, yeah. And we'll taste and see. You know, it's going to depend on your taste. I don't like it sweet. Yeah. And I, I do. cut the sweet in half. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And Are sometimes, we making it for me or you? <laughs> it's for me. Yes, it You're is. just the hired help. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And so now a um, little lemon pepper. Is it all of it? Yeah, go for that. Yeah. Woo! Pepper's we, good. We do like pepper. Yes. We and both. then a pinch of salt. And just do okay. a couple of pinches. And that's it. It's oh, wow. to simmer for and that's a couple this? of minutes. This is it? Yep. Oh my gosh. Yum. And so, then it, so it doesn't need to sit, because I always find it's really good the next day. Is well, that the same thing with this? Everything yeah. that's slow yeah. cooked is okay. good, better okay. the next day. Yeah. Oh, so beautiful. I turn the heat down, give it another three or four minutes just to meld the flavor. Sure. And then we'll um, put it together with some little nice. condiments. Have a little taste, John. I wasn't even 28 uh, minutes. Okay, so yeah, here we go. I'm excited about this. <laughs> oh, I too. love all yeah. these condiments. It's all about the, well, it's not all about the condiments. No, it's not. But okay. I, you know what? It is all about the chili. So okay, I mean, let's we, have a taste. We need to have a taste all of this right, stuff. Okay. The smell is good. I know. That little bit of cinnamon, so delightful. Mm. God, it's good. Heaven in a bowl. I'd say. She said heaven in a bowl. Heaven in a bowl. That's awesome. I love it. Ooh, it's got a little yeah, kick. I know. Thanks. Cheers to fall. Yeah. When it tastes like this. Hey, my mom used to make five-minute chili. And what was that recipe? One can of chili, a can opener, a pan, you got it. Turn on the stove and away you go. <laughs> you look better. I
Welcome back to Gurney with Cisco. We're here at Magnuson Park at the Mountaineer Building where the Puget Sound Mycological Society is about to put on an unbelievable mushroom show. They do it every fall, amazing? teach you everything about mushrooms, especially that way you won't eat the wrong one. You know, I recently <laughs> met a guy who's part of this group and he took us deep into the woods foraging for chanterelles. Drive down any dirt road in the Pacific Northwest in the fall and you just might find some hunters, mushroom hunters. These chanterelles are like a chef's gold. Uh, we got some chanterelles, fresh picked this morning. These seasoned hunters are jokingly territorial. Stay away from my chanterelle patch. But the truth is, wild mushrooms are free to anyone willing to look for them. You know, finding these foods that are sometimes hiding from us, it really is like being a kid again out there on a treasure hunt. Langdon Cook is a nationally renowned forager. He finds most of his bounty at home right here in the Pacific Northwest. Cook's new book, The Mushroom Hunters, profiles characters who make a living finding fungi. He took us to his secret spot in the Cascade foothills for this treasure hunt, a forest that will soon be gone. So through the woods you can see the tags uh, that mean they're going to log this area. This could be the last year that I picked. This could be the very last time that I picked this patch. Delicious and relatively easy to find. Chanterelles are go-to mushrooms for the novice hunter. Basically, we've just stepped off the trail, entering the woods, and here we go. And that is a beauty. Would-be foragers should heed a couple of common sense warnings. The forager's golden rule is to never, ever eat anything from the wild that you can't identify with 100% certainty. The other thing I should mention is it's really easy to get turned around in a forest like this, having a compass or a GPS unit or something like that. Once the hunt begins, it's easy to see why getting lost is a danger. It's hard to pay attention to anything but finding the next mushroom. So can you see it right over there in the moth poking up? Oh, oh see how they hide underneath these ferns and what not, there it is. Want to make sure it's a chanterelle? Use your nose. A lot of chefs and foodies will tell you that uh, chanterelles have a really distinctive flavor and aroma. Um, and some will say, kind of like stone fruit, almost like apricots. There's something magical about the mushroom hunt for Langdon Cook. It's more than a culinary calling. Good haul here, huh? Think about it. What better office is there than a forest full of mushrooms in the Pacific Northwest? Being in the woods does not get old for me. I, and, and actually, my wife thinks it's a huge racket. She just can't believe that I'm doing this for a living. You can find Langdon's book, The Mushroom Hunters, in bookstores. Well, we're going to learn a little bit more about mushrooms right now. Marion Maxwell, the president of the Puget Sound Mycological Society. Hello. Hello. Thanks for coming so, tonight. First of all, look at these mushrooms. Purple and orange and white and, oh my lord, I've never seen so many beautiful colors. What do people need to know about mushrooms? Don't just pick from a guidebook. Take ID classes if you can. Join a mushroom group. It's safe, safer that way. And above all, don't go out in the woods alone. People have gone missing going out in the woods alone. Are any of these mushrooms right here uh, ones we have to worry about for our pets or for yes. us? Yes, actually, um, this one right here, the ammonita here, wow. and then also the ammonita, the red one. There's a red one coming out right here oh, look next at that. to there. Ooh, look at ammonita that. muscaria there um, are actually not so toxic to people, but they are toxic to pets, uh -huh. and they're particularly bad for cats. We have an ID clinic from 4 to 7 on Monday nights through the mushroom season and you can come to the Center for Urban Horticulture and please have us identify it for you Absolutely. before you eat anything. Well, nice. thank wow. you so much, Mary. Well, thank you. I just think these are the coolest things I've ever seen. I didn't know I'd like mushrooms these, so much. These are the funnest things. They're so pretty. They yeah. are. They're beautiful. Awesome. Thank they're you for cool. the information and thanks everyone for joining us. We are having a blast looking at these cool things. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for coming. watching, everyone. Get out and enjoy your mushrooms because they're really beautiful. Oh, la, la. Have a great weekend. Have you ever seen it? That looks like, like the it sea looks anemone. Like coral. It does.